Previously on The Code, life with the Mariners. You know you're going to have mates here that you'll, you'll have for the rest of your life because you're so close and uh, know so much about each other and uh, spend a lot of time with each other. <laughs> How are you, bro? Hey. Hey, bud. Just doing some modelling on the feet. Just come to train this morning and see my good mate Percy. Get my feet cleaned up. Some of the, the dirtier jobs that, that I definitely require as a footballer. Um, it probably all started at the start of this season, something that a couple of boys we had, um, and then it just built on from there. You know, new player each day, and, and next week it'll be another player join on, and it's just a matter of uh, coming in and remembering all the handshakes. The Derby 29 later on this afternoon at Blue Tongue Central Coast Stadium. How it's going to work this afternoon with Arnie in the air conditioned booth upstairs and you down on the sideline. I mean, it's, it's a team sport and you always want, want your team and your, and your mates to do well and, and you want to you wanna win. We are the Mariners! The mighty, mighty Mariners! The mighty, mighty Mariners! Jack and Arnie would have got his message to. McGlinchey. Rose will get another chance for Zanek. Rose wants it again. Now can they produce the final balls? Deflected, saved by Veragini and cleared by Galloway. G'day mate, how are you? Obviously a Mariners fan. Yeah man, good to see you are. Yeah, go to the games a fair bit? Yeah, no, I've been going a fair bit. The conversation between two football fans differs from any other. In Australia, no other code has the global reach that allows the language of football to be spoken between so many different people. As such, A-League football fans are unique. They are passionate and tribal, but oddly unified in their love for the game. Tonight, The Code looks at three groups of Mariners supporters and their match day experience, as the season gets ever closer to its dramatic conclusion. John Wright is a local boy born and bred, who hopes to pass down his love of the Mariners and the Central Coast to his young son, Deacon. I want to go on that one then. You want that one? Okay, so we're going to go around the front. I used to play footy on that ground as a junior. It wasn't, wasn't soccer, it was rugby league. It used to call Graham Park. That's the thing I like. I like about taking my own kids is I get to go back there to the place I used to play footy, the exact same park. It's pretty cool to sit in the crowd and you know watch the Mariners with your, with your kids, knowing that you'd actually been out there as a junior yourself. Mariners, they do a lot of um, Mariners junior days, which I've taken Deacon to a couple of. You know, as a, as a junior soccer player, when he goes there and sees all his heroes, you know, it makes me feel good that, you know, he's getting into a sport which is clean, very good, played everywhere, probably the most popular sport around, in my opinion. And it's just, uh, I get a really good feeling that I'm, you know, sharing an experience with my, my young five-year-old son, which, you know, I'll, I'll never get again, because one day he's going to be 14, 15, 16 and left the coop. So it's just special at that age. In, in my opinion, it's, it's family orientated, which is one of the main reasons why I like to go to the games. You know, it's a friendly atmosphere when you, when you go there. They've always got things going on with the kids. It's basically all about family. I love living on the Central Coast. It's got everything. Um, it's got great beaches. I love to surf whenever I get a chance. Um, obviously I, I work locally, I'm a, I'm a teacher at one of the local schools. Love my fishing 
and my sports, my golf. My golf course is just up the road from where I live. And of course, you've got beautiful Glenworth Valley. Um, we spent some time here on the quad bikes, as you can see. <laughs> Unbelievable, you've got your camping here, you've got your quad bikes, you've got um, kayaking, bushwalking, everything. Beautiful place to come. Believe it or not, I've lived here for over 40 years. It's, a, it's very convenient. I couldn't imagine not living on the coast. Supporting the Mariners can divide opinions and challenge loyalties, but very rarely does it get in the way of friendship. Well, what do you think of the game on Friday? Uh, well, well, we played all right. All right. We've got to play all these teams that are just behind us one more time, and, and a lot of them are at home. So we, it's a uh, big, big match, big match on Friday. I've known Mark, Mark and Mary God, since '87 for all, all our lives. Mark's um, and I have got the same interests. We love, we love American football. We love soccer. We love. Everything, but with, with the Mariners, we, we, we after games we go to say McDonald's, something that sit down, and we'll, we'll talk about the game, um, and we can go on forever. Um, God, if we start one subject, we'll go to another, we'll go to another. We could be sitting there for two hours, and we wouldn't even know. You know he's, and he's my best friend as well too. So, oh, but the grand final is different. Yeah, I know. A lot of pressure. Yeah, still. A lot of pressure. But they learn from that. They would have learned from that. Now, if they get into the grand final again, and that situation, or even in the lead up to the grand final, if they go to penalties. He's got that experience now, like most of the players in the team. Well, since I've been following for so long, they mean everything. When there's not a game on at home, we, we miss that there's not a game on. So, and uh, you know, I've got to say, and I say to myself, that CCM forever. So, you know, I support them like a lot of the um, fans that support European teams do. You know, they're, they're kind of our life. We're, we're always looking forward to the game, find out information about them. So. You know, I'm a, I am call myself a die-hard fan. I wouldn't miss a game for, for anything. What I like about the Mariners is they are a very small team uh, on a very small budget, and they're doing, you know, it's, it's like the underdog thing. You, you see a, a team that's got you know, no well-known name players, and they're, um, yeah, they've got a good coach, and they, um, they're just you know, doing their job, plotting away game after game. Hopefully this year, fingers crossed, they can get the double, do the premiership again and, and get that elusive grand final that they've been uh, missing out on. No fan gets as close to the heart of a football team than those who are directly related to the club. Yes, we like to get together as often as we can. We don't want to talk about football, but um, Obviously, it comes on to football occasionally, as we have to, you know, that's what you do. Girls, are we going to win tomorrow? That's the big question. I hope so. Well, no, I think so. I think Top so. of the table, I think of so. course. Yeah. I, I always like find that if I go to the toilet while the game's going on, yeah, they, they, score. Score. they win. That always oh, happens. Good. That's good. Not always. You know, I actually try to spend probably 90 minutes in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get the feeling on the day. I wake so, up in the morning okay, and so I. It's in your wall. Usually, just in her basically, I just get yeah, up in the morning yeah, and I, I just, I just get, get that score. feeling. Halfway through the season mm. last year. Yeah, we went. We went. We went. Yeah, and we started. And they remember? all start to talk about it. Goes in the papers, and you worry because you think, well, you know, are the, are the players going to read into that a lot? Are they going to take it on board? Are they going to just shrug it? Because you know, they're young, and they, and you know, you don't know how they think. So it worries you. And you as a coach. Well, you have a haircut tomorrow. That's always a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'll look sharp. But I think sometimes I get more stress than him. I have to say, I think I stress him out sometimes because I'm more stressed. So, yes. We yeah. have to win, I think, this game. Well, we won't have We've a big lead draws. because if you compare it from last year, we were Six quite. Points. Yeah, we were 10. No, I think they'll be right, but I think tomorrow morning will be a bit of a stress for all of us, I think. Obviously, you talk a lot of football. I've grown up in watching football and talking about football ever since I was a little girl. And it, it, I love it. I mean, I played it when I was little, and I love hearing about the stories and how passionate he is and how much he loves it. But he is like any other dad. He still yells at me for not doing the washing or, or you know, doing the household chores. But it's good, yeah. He comes across as the gruff, grumpy coach that marches, gets marched off the field and, and um, shouts and throws his arms around. But he's totally opposite when he's at home. He's an absolute pussycat. He's wonderful. 
Should I say that? Will I embarrass him? Probably, but anyway. <laughs> no matter where you come from or what you do, every fan is equal when it comes to game day, with each contributing in their own small way to the experience, the atmosphere and the result. Normally what we do is we get here um, half an hour earlier and we meet up in the, in the ground um, and we talk about it and we watch the Mariners train about um, like before the game. Mariners! 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 Yeah, he, should be, he might be playing today. Go to Mariners. Three changes to the, the 11 which started against the Jets with Sturjoski, Caceres and an injured Trent Sainsbury dropping out. Zach Anderson takes his place in the heart of defence. Nick Montgomery is restored to midfield while Bernie Avini is straight back in just two days after returning from his trial with Belgian Giants Club Rouge. Avini, see Avini's back. He come back from overseas so have they... Well he, has, he only went for a trial. And the yellow, he's going to give it to this guy out here, I'd say. Here we go. And then, and then, and then. Oh, yeah! Oh, the side of the net. Oh, oh, oh. How do you miss from there? How do you miss? I have no idea. Oh, get me. <laughs> Can somebody remove that goalie? Seriously. <laughs> Has to delay the pass now. Here's McGlinch, here's a decoy. Oh, you're joking! Well, how many chances do they need the Mariners? Right, I'm not going to look anymore. Mariners! 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 Should have been dogs. That's all you can say. Must have been a terrible sight. Bowls, deflection! Oh, a goal out of nowhere! Oh, you're joking. You? Adelaide United in front somehow in this one. I can't believe they're one nil up. I'm starting to feel anxiety. In the crossing. Not bad either. Chance at the back post! And there is the equaliser! The substitute Duke has got it! And the Mariners finally have a go. Well, they just played with being too deep and not reacting to the second ball from the corner because it wasn't a good corner come in. Even if we draw, we're still ahead. A draw is not good. We drew last week and we drew the week before. We need to score two draw goals. Draw is better than a loss. OK, yeah. we will. Watch now. One to Duke. Nice first touch. Duke! Oh, he's got it again! Oh, he's got it! It's Duke making a real impression off the bench. A second strike makes it 2-1 to the Mariners. Well, it had that have power and it did. But he just goes in. I thought at first there was an aimless ball really out to the left-hand side, but Duke did well. He just pulled off the shoulder. Sydney coming off the back of a 7-1 win. Demolition job on Wellington. But the cheers ring out around the Blue Tuck Stadium. We're out, top of the lake, so we're out, top of the lake. We're out, top of the lake, so we're out, top of the lake. They had to come from behind in the second half after wasting a stack of chances in the first 45. Mitch Duke off the bench. He got a double. We needed that. We got it. Really good. Really, really happy. Happy weekend. It's a long weekend. I'm gonna, we're going to have a really good weekend now. Yep, great. Very happy. Very relieved and very happy for the boys. So well deserved. They played awesome. I knew they'd win. I thought they'd win 2-1, but we got that third goal and it's fantastic. We really needed that, didn't we? Didn't oh, you know. Whatever, please. Well done. Thank you. Hello, Rachel. Nice win. That was yeah. fantastic. What a performance, huh? That played unbelievable. Yeah. It was the best that got the first half. I reckon it's the best we've ever played. It was phenomenal. Boys well, were great, huh? Tonight, they turn it on tonight. What's that? Are you still on that thing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's why I don't normally get that reception, I'll tell you.
the season reaches its critical final stretch, with mixed results for the defending premiers. And so, after 26 rounds of football, in which the Mariners led for 15, the Western Sydney Wanderers edge ahead to claim the Premiership with one game remaining. As the finals approach, the players know how important support can be. It is what the club does away from the stadium that can make all the difference within it. We're here today for Newcastle Permanent, one of our major sponsors, uh, doing a promo. We're signing posters and giving away prizes, and um, one of our lucky fans will get to toss the coin in Saturday's game. What's your name? Team. Team, do you play soccer? What position do you play? Hey, are you coming to the game on the weekend? Yeah? Are you going to come as a superhero? Or are you a bit old for that? Who's your favourite superhero? Iron Man. Iron Man's cool. Oh, I think um, for a club like us in, in a small community like uh, Central Coast is that we need to um, engage in the community and be out there and show them that we care about the community as much as they care about us and um, this is just one of the many programs that we undertake. And when Juki scribbles on with a text dot on the signs there, he says it makes his blood boil. <laughs> so you know like if you go like chalk, on a, on a chalkboard, you know how that yeah. like makes it, he gets that feeling from this. <laughs> the Newcastle Permanent gives back to the community in many ways through our charitable foundation and also helping things like this, the Mariners Active School Program, uh, where we get out in the community and help kids uh, achieve their goals. Uh, today is a great opportunity for the families of the Central Coast to come and meet uh, all the players and their heroes, uh, the people that they look up to, um, and also wish them well for the uh, upcoming semi finals. So, so today, Trent Sainsbury, Adriana Pellegrino, and Oliver Bazanic will be our judges. So She's got the hair, the blue and yellow hair, the blue and yellow face paint, the jersey, and the. Look at those, blue and yellow. Oli Bazanic is given 10, Adriana Pellegrino, 10 as well. Can we get a perfect score? 11, 101! Yeah. 121. That's going to be hard to beat. Ladies and gentlemen, $500 thanks to the Newcastle Permanent goes to Ruby Rose. Are you going to the game on Saturday? Well, guess what? You're tossing the coin at the beginning of the match. Congratulations. The afternoon offers a dream come true for one young fan and the chance for players to appreciate the community they represent. It is two days later that the team will truly be able to repay the favour. Hasfield, uh, Brad McDonald, Anthony Caceres, Fitzy, Sturjowski, Bodjik, Ernie, Griffs, and Green, leading goal scorer, Josh Rose, Oli Bazanich, Swanee, no Patrick, Sainsbury, he's had a good season, Tigrino, Morton, Zach Anderson, Ryan, Ryan yeah. and Mitchell Duke. Alright, who's, who's your favourite, isn't it? The last game of the regular season will change nothing. Today they play for pride and for their supporters. You watch the Garcia, mm -hmm. if he's dropping in from number 10, oh. if he's going in the space. Yeah, from one of the two holders, Clarky for them. If they stay flat, yeah, or if one of them is pushing on like a full 3 3. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that. Oh, this one. 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 Oh, this the Oh, this one. 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 Oh, It's us, everybody wants it. If you take the shirt on, you play for the Mariners. Come on, I want to see that song. Come on! In behind! Yes, Griff! Come on! Come on!
Lockie, now you've got him burnt for speed, huh? Huh? Lockie! Good work, Lockie! Go, go, go! Go, go Lockie! That's a really tough one. Go. Across the back line, and when we're going forward into the pockets, yeah? So when we get the ball, it's either us or the strikers. Yeah. Yeah. Because Pace is not on the side when I get the ball. Yeah, I know. Hey, you see what I can Yeah, you play that way. Zach, start looking for Griff. Come on, be confident. Look for Griff for the diagonal. In sport, every season comes to an end. Now a final series awaits. It is unforgiving, it is a new beginning, and it's the Mariners for the taking. Next time on The Code, Life with the Mariners.